expert here to discuss this great occasion and the launch, of course, of Poppy Day uh, and the historical significance is British Army veteran Simon Western, CBE. Simon, a very good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, Mike. Thanks very much indeed for joining us, Simon. I've got the poppy on here. Obviously, um, a lot of talk this week about uh, whether the poppy being biodegradable is uh, is a move with the times or whether you need to really do that or not. My view, it doesn't really matter what they make out make it out of as long as people buy them and they can continue to do so uh, in huge numbers, right? Absolutely, Mike. Um, it's gone through seven or eight different variations and changes over the years. Um, and people have even taken to wearing wreath poppies. So I don't think it makes a great deal of difference. It's more about why you're wearing it and you're wearing it because you want to remember, but also pay tribute and respect to those that sacrificed. You know, um, for those of those people who served like myself who got injured, we kind of carry our remembrance every day. Um, but I don't mind that. And a lot of my friends don't mind it in the sense that the battlefields and the graveyards are full of people who'd love to have our problems and love to have our uh, our constant reminders that we served. Mm. But, you know, um, it was a privilege to serve and, and I was privileged to serve along some of the best people I've ever met and will ever meet. Yes. And, and you were, of course, um, in the Falklands conflict when um, an awful lot of people lost their lives on, on both sides of that uh, divide. I mean, the, the conversations that have had now surrounding all sorts of things are probably quite confusing for those of us like you and I uh, who think about winning a war uh, as, as something that needed to be done. And obviously you can have regrets about uh, the opposing numbers that fell on the other side. But this is about the British uh, and the Allies rather than about everybody, isn't it? Absolutely. You know, we, we can only deal with what we can deal with. Um, but we should always pay respect to those on the opposition um, because they were sons, daughters, mothers, uncles, aunties, the same as our guys. Yeah. Um, but we didn't know them. And, uh, you know, the, the people that we have, that we remember, are still close to us, you know, and we still see families. Um, I still go to events where the families and the friends and relations still attend. Mm. So, you know, we, we have to be mindful of, of what priorities we take. And I keep saying this to my children, you know, sometimes you just have to prioritise. You may have emotions about every aspect of life, but sometimes you have to prioritise. Mm. And um, th this is what we have to do this uh, 12th of November, the 11th of November, prioritise the people from Britain and the Commonwealth and, and from other allied services, you know, America, uh, to, to respect them for their sacrifice. Yeah. Because it's hugely important. You know, we, we fight for a better cause. And, and sometimes people might not agree with it, but, uh, you know, at the end of the day, service people are paid to do a job. We're not paid for our opinion. No. We can only have those afterwards. Well, isn't it funny, you know, because, um, again, you and I grew up in a different time uh, than the people growing up now, but everybody's got an opinion on everything now. Um, you know, you literally can't move for opinions. You know, you just switch on the television, there's somebody you've never heard of spouting off about something or other. You've got social media, everybody's got a view. I mean, I took my own kids for the first time, uh, both teenage boys now, um, to Normandy to see the Normandy beaches and the D-Day landings. And it was an incredibly moving experience, not just for me, but also for them, because I said to the oldest, who's now 19, I said, you would have been here, you know. This is where you would have been uh, in that uh, time in the 1940s. Um, and, you know, I know that it's, it's probably a bit of a hackneyed old thing to say. I made them watch Saving Private Ryan the night before, which gave a pretty good view of, of, of what actually happened. And it's amazing how little has changed, you know, like geographically of uh, on that part of Normandy. Then we went to, to, to the cemeteries and saw the numbers of, of war dead. And it's I, I say to anyone who hasn't seen that, you must go. And if you've got children, you've got to take them. Absolutely. Everything's about education, Mike. And if we don't educate our families and if we don't educate the young and the, the younger generation, how are they ever to learn? Um, I went to, to Belgium a few years ago now and uh, I was surprised to find that the battle lines that the Germans used then were the battle lines that many other nations had used to fight over over five, six hundred years previously. Yeah. So not a lot changes in that respect. But what we mustn't do is forget. Mm. We mustn't forget that 
that these people suffer and they die, whatever war they're in. Yeah. But if we do keep re removing the history and the education from young people, how are they ever to learn about the mistakes that the previous generations made? Mm. You know, we will continue to fight and make more mistakes. And you've only got to look at the globe right now and look at the conflicts, the major conflicts that are going on. Um, and all of this is because people won't talk, people yeah. won't move, people are intransigent, people are stubborn, people have set their stall out, and that's the only way. It's my yeah. way or the highway. Yeah. And at the end of the day, people will die, all for the sake of people at the top who are, what, building empires, yeah. filling their boots with stolen, looted money in many cases. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we have to get to a realisation that Young men and women die in these conflicts, and there's always, I hate the term collateral damage, which is the civilians. Mm. They're the innocents in all this. And you, you've only got to look at what's happened, you know, in, in the Middle East. Yeah. Innocents have suffered for other people's political and, I don't know, monetary ambitions. Uh, and it's frightening. It's absolutely frightening what's gone on. Whatever started it, mm. whatever's going to finish it, yeah. at the end of the day, people are going to die. And... We've got to stop it somehow. Yeah. You know, how we do it, I'm not a politician. I'm not paid to do that. It, it's above my pay grade. I wish I was in a position to do something about it. Mm. But it, it's horrific. And seeing seeing all these sad images, um, it, it's just awful. And as somebody that's been through conflict, somebody who's seen horrific things and things that I've never repeated to other people, mm. um, it, it's, it's unsettling. It's unsettling because you know there's a bigger picture and it could get worse. Yeah. And that's what's frightening. You know, yeah. I've got grandchildren and that's what's frightening for me is, you know, where does it go from here? Yeah. Yeah, and it is a recurring problem because, as you say, whether it's political or whether it's driven by some ideology or whether it's some hatred or other, which there is sometimes because sometimes war is unavoidable, um, uh, as it seems to be at the moment between uh, Israel uh, and Hamas. I mean, there is not any kind of sign for me that that is going to go uh, in any way away uh, anytime soon because I can't see how either one of them who can't seem to uh, exist with the other on the other side of the wall, if you like. I don't see how that can ever be resolved. But I'm just going to ask for people to call in as well, Simon, just before we carry on, because um, normally we do a, a thing called the Veterans Voice here at this time of the day, uh, and at the moment we're not doing it this week just for one reason or another. But we will be taking calls from uh, veterans as well, because a lot of veterans listen and watch uh, Talk TV, um, and they want to say to say their their piece as well. But you're quite right, Simon, to to, to raise that question. The number, of course, is 0344 499 1000, because I think not enough attention is paid to veterans sometimes in this country. And I'm not talking about veterans who are down on their luck or, or veterans who are homeless. We know that that's a problem. But in terms of just what you've experienced and what you know and what you've seen and what you would say to people they should avoid doing, you know, I'd like to see more... Um, uh, kind of advice being sought from people like yourself, um, from governments, you know? It's amazing, Mike. You know, um, veterans become very popular around about this time of year with politicians. Um, and then after November, you know, the, the Remembrance Weekend, maybe for a week after, uh, the build-up, we're important. But then we just pushed on the back burner. But there are many, many groups that have a, a similar shout on that one. We all get, we all we all get sort of taken for granted. But we're a, we're a vote winner for a while, mm. um, you know. And uh, things have to change. We have to give more respect to those people who who work for the betterment of our country and for our people. Um, and, and again, you know, some people may not agree with this, but at the end of the day, their rights and freedoms were hard fought for. They only have the the right to their opinion. They only have the right to voice that opinion in a in a very undemocratic way in some cases, especially yeah. when you see some of the demonstrations that have gone on in London. Yeah. Um, you know, they only have that right because people like myself, many, many thousands of others, millions of others who have served, fought for those rights, who suffered for those rights. Um, you know, so, you know, don't take it out on the veteran. No. Don't take it out on the veteran. We do our job. You know, it's down to others who aren't in harm's way to do theirs. Mm. And if they don't do their job, 
then other people suffer. And if they take too long to do their job, if they prevaricate far, far too much, then what happens? We end up with war. Mm. There is no appeasing anybody. You cannot appease anybody. We've seen it time and time and time again. When you appease people, they take advantage to arm, to resupply, to build up their their force, to then go and wreak destruction on whoever it is mm. that they've got their, their sights targeted yeah. on. And, um, you know, we, we have to be more decisive. There's one thing in this world that we do lack hugely, and that's really good leadership. Yeah. And leadership is what's called for right now. Because, you know, we look across the pond and, my God, all those 450 million people, and we see them with the leadership they end up with. We look at our lot and look at the leadership we've ended up with over the years, not just what we've got now, but previously as well. And, you know, and, and look what we've got to look forward to. Um, we need decent, honest, strong leadership. And dare I say it, a lot of people might not like this as well, but have we had anybody better than than Baroness Thatcher at the time? Mm. And people, again, may find that controversial, but when she was good, she was brilliant. And when we went to war, she was everything we needed to yeah. have. She, she cannibalised the whole British military and sent as much as she could to the Falklands. Yeah. And, and we were fortunate, very, very fortunate, to come out of that uh, as the guys that won. Yeah. But there was no victory because there's nothing victorious when you have to go to war. There's yeah. nothing glorious or glamorous. You know, you, you see the walking wounded that are hidden from, from sight many of the time. And, uh, you know, when you see the suffering that goes on in hospital for many, many years after the fighting has, has gone quiet, all the guns have silenced, there's nothing glamorous in it, yeah. you know, but the one thing that we all treasure, all veterans treasure, are the memories of all the people that we served with. Yeah. And this is why the poppy is so, so desperately important, because this is about them. This is about their families, it's about my family, the suffering they went through because of me. You know, it's about all of the veterans and all of their families and their children, their great-grandchildren. My best friend at the time died on the Sir Galahad, and he never saw his son born. So this is as much for young Andrew as it is for the older Andrew, who I knew, who made me laugh no end of times. Um, you know, and I was just running up to him for one last laugh, really. Um, but I never got that chance to take the mickey to pull a prank on him. Um, I just wish I had, and yeah. maybe he might have been out of harm's way and survived. Incredible. Um, Simon, as ever, so eloquent. Thank you so much for, for, for putting it in those words and, and speaking so well, because you always have done. And, and you know, I take my uh, hat off to you. I would say I would salute you, but that's kind of an insult because I was never in the armed forces. But listen, thank you, uh, Simon, very much for talking to us. Um, and thank you for alerting us to all of those things that you mentioned. And why? This is the thing. Uh, Remembrance Sunday is, is, yes, a very important time of the year and, yes, a very important time to think about all of the people like Simon uh, who uh, gave so much and for some who gave their lives to protect us and to create the world in which we live. And let's face it, uh, a country where an awful lot of people want to live despite where they were born. They want to come here and live here because of what we created. And it's kind of ironic that some of those people who have come here uh, don't want to celebrate some of the things that we are very proud of in our history.